statement in the case concerning the question of the delimitation of the continental shelf between Nicaragua and Colombia between, beyond 200 nautical miles from the Nicaraguan coast, Nicaragua versus Colombia. For reasons made known to me, the Vice President and Judge Sebatunde, who duly participated in the deliberation and the final vote in this case, are unable to sit with us today. I recall that the proceedings in the present case were instituted on 16 September 2013 by the Republic of Nicaragua against the Republic of Colombia in relation to the delimitation of the continental shelf between them beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea of Nicaragua is measured. In accordance with the usual practice, I shall not read out the introductory paragraphs of the judgment, which set out the main elements in the procedural history of the case. I shall also omit some of the paragraphs and summarize others. I'll therefore begin reading the judgment at paragraph 23. The full text of the judgment will, of course, be available at the close of the sitting. It may be recalled that in its judgment of 19 November 2012 in the case concerning territorial and maritime dispute Nicaragua versus Colombia, to which I shall refer as the 2012 judgment, the court decided that Colombia has sovereignty over the islands at Albuquerque, Baja Nuevo, East Southeast Keys, Quitasueño, Roncador, Sorana, and Saranilla, and established a single maritime boundary delimiting the continental shelf and the exclusive economic zones of Nicaragua and Colombia up to the 200 nautical mile limit from the baselines from which the territorial sea of Nicaragua is measured. The court, however, noted in its reasoning in that judgment that since Nicaragua had not yet notified the Secretary General of the United Nations of the location of these baselines under Article 16, Paragraph 2 of the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, to which I shall refer as UNCLOS or the Convention, the precise location of the eastern endpoints of the maritime boundary could not be determined. In the 2012 judgment, the court further found that it could not uphold a claim contained in Nicaragua's final submission requesting that the court adjudge and declare that, I quote, the appropriate form of delimitation within the geographical and legal framework constituted by the mainland coasts of Nicaragua and Colombia is a continental shelf boundary dividing by equal parts the overlapping entitlements to a continental shelf of both parties, end of quote. In particular, the court noted that since Nicaragua had not established that it had a continental margin that extends far enough to overlap with Colombia's 200 nautical mile entitlement to the continental shelf, measured from Colombia's mainland coast, the court was not in a position to delimit the continental shelf boundary between Nicaragua and Colombia, as requested by Nicaragua, even using the general formulation proposed by it. The court observed in this regard that Nicaragua had submitted to the Commission on the limits of continental shelf, to which I shall refer as the CLCS or the Commission, only preliminary information, which fell short of meeting the requirements for information on the limits of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles to be submitted under Article 76, Paragraph 8 of UNCLOS. On 24 June 2013, in accordance with Article 76, Paragraph 8 of UNCLOS, Nicaragua presented its full submission to the CLCS regarding the limits of its continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of its territorial sea is measured. As already mentioned, on 16 September 2013, Nicaragua filed the application instituting the current proceedings, requesting the court to adjudge and declare the precise course of the maritime boundary between Nicaragua and Colombia in the areas of the continental shelf which appertain to each of them beyond the boundaries determined by the court in the 2012 judgment. Both parties have adduced extensive technical and scientific evidence as to which as to whether Nicaragua has established an entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of its territorial sea is measured, also referred to as an extended continental shelf, and if so, the precise outer limits of the continental shelf. On 17 March 2016, the court issued its judgment on the preliminary objections presented by Nicaragua. In that judgment, sorry, presented by Colombia. In that judgment, the court found that it had jurisdiction on the basis of the Pact of Bogota to entertain the first request put forward by Nicaragua in its application, 
asking the court to determine the precise course of the maritime boundary between Nicaragua and Colombia in the areas of continental shelf which appertain to each of them beyond the boundaries determined by the court in its 2012 judgment. The court also found this request to be admissible. A memorial by Nicaragua and a counter memorial by Colombia were filed within the time limits fixed by the court. A reply by Nicaragua and a rejoinder by Colombia were also filed within the time limits fixed by the court. In an order of 4 October 2022, the court indicated that in the circumstances of the case, before proceeding to any consideration of technical and scientific questions in relation to the delimitation of the continental shelf between Nicaragua and Colombia beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea of Nicaragua is measured, it was necessary to decide on certain questions of law after hearing the parties thereon. Accordingly, Nicaragua and Colombia were directed to present their arguments at the oral proceedings in the case exclusively with regard to two questions. In the judgment, after providing an overview of the party's positions, the court examines the first question formulated in the order of 4 October 2022. The court recalls that this question is worded as follows, I quote, under customary international law, may a state's entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of its territorial sea is measured extend within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state, end of quote. The court then addresses the preliminary character of the first question. It notes that while the parties agree that the first question posed by the court arises in the particular factual context of the present case, they have approached this question differently. Nicaragua contends that there is an overlap between its own entitlement to an extended continental shelf and Colombia's entitlement to a continental shelf within 200 nautical miles of the latter's coast, and that, therefore, the court must proceed to an equitable delimitation. Colombia, for its part, considers that a case that a state must first establish that it has a legal title to certain maritime area that overlaps within area that may be claimed by another state before the principles and rules of maritime delimitation come into play. As the court has indicated previously, an essential step in any delimitation is to determine whether there are entitlements and whether they overlap. Determining whether there is any area of overlap between the entitlements of the two states, each founded on a distinct legal title, is the first step in any maritime delimitation because the task of delimitation consists in resolving the overlapping claims by drawing a line of separation of the maritime areas concerned. Therefore, the first question has a preliminary character in the sense that it must be answered in order to ascertain whether the court may proceed to the delimitation requested by Nicaragua and consequently, whether it is necessary to consider the scientific and technical questions that would arise for the purposes of such a delimitation. The court next recalls that it asked the parties to base their arguments on customary international law, which is applicable in the present case because unlike Nicaragua, Colombia is not a party to UNCLOS. The court then turns to the determination of the customary international law applicable to the maritime areas at issue, namely the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf. The court recalls that the material of customary international law is to be looked for primarily in the actual practice and opinio juris of states, and that multilateral conventions may have an important role to play in recording and defining rules deriving from custom or indeed in developing them. The court notes that UNCLOS was drawn up at the third international, sorry, the third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea, which was held over a period of nine years. As is indicated in its preamble, the objective of the convention was to achieve the codification and progressive development of the Law of the Sea. Even prior to the conclusion of the negotiations, certain aspects of the legal regimes governing the maritime areas of coastal states notably the continental shelf and the exclusive economic zone, were reflected in state practice, primarily through declarations, laws, and regulations. This practice was taken into account during the drafting of the convention. A very large number of states have since become parties to UNCLOS, 
which has significantly contributed to the crystallization of certain customary rules. As recognized in the preamble of the convention, I quote, the problem of ocean space is so close, are so closely related and need to be considered as a whole, end of quote. The method of negotiation at the conference was designed against this background and had the aim of achieving consensus through a series of provisional and interdependent texts on various questions at issue that resulted in a comprehensive and integrated text forming a package deal. The integrated character of the various parts of the convention is particularly evident in relation to part five of UNCLOS, which concerns the exclusive economic zone, and part six, which concerns the continental shelf. The relationship between these two parts is specified in Article 56, Paragraph 3 in Part 5, which provides that, I quote, the rights set out in this article with respect to the seabed and subsoil shall be exercised in accordance with Part 6, end of quote. Referring to its relevant jurisprudence, the Court recalls that Article 56 reflects customary rules on the rights and duties in the exclusive economic zone of coastal states, and that the definition of the continental shelf set out in Article 76, Paragraph 1 of UNCLOS forms part of customary international law. In view of the foregoing, the Court turns to the question whether under customary international law, a state's entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured may extend within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. The court observes that Nicaragua and Colombia disagree on this issue. In support of their respective positions, the parties have set out their views both on the relationship between the regime governing the exclusive economic zone and that governing the continental shelf and on certain considerations relevant to the regime governing the extended continental shelf. The court considers each of these in turn. The court recalls that the regime that governs the exclusive economic zone set out in UNCLOS is the result of a compromise reached at the third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea. Notably, this regime confers exclusively on the coastal state the sovereign rights of exploration, exploitation, conservation and management of natural resources within 200 nautical miles of its coast, while specifying certain duties on the part of the coastal state, as well as the rights and duties of other states in the zone. The court recalls that it declared in its judgment delivered in the case relating to alleged violations of sovereign rights and maritime spaces in the Caribbean Sea, Nicaragua versus Colombia, that the rights and duties of coastal states and other states in the exclusive economic zone set out in Articles 56, 58, 61, 62, and 73 of UNCLOS reflect customary international law. As stated earlier, the legal regimes governing the exclusive economic zone and the continental shelf of coastal states within 200 nautical miles from its baseline are interrelated. Indeed, within the exclusive economic zone, the rights with respect to the seabed and subsoil are to be exercised in accordance with the legal regime that governs the continental shelf and the coastal state exercises over the continental shelf sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring it and exploiting its natural resources. The court next refers to two Bay of Bengal cases, one between Bangladesh and Myanmar before the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea, and another between Bangladesh and India before an arbitral tribunal. It observes that in these two cases, the use of an adjusted equidistance line in a delimitation between adjacent states gave rise to a gray area as an incidental result of that adjustment. The circumstances of those cases are distinct from the situation in the present case, in which one state claims an extended continental shelf that lies within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of one or more other states. The court considers that these decisions are of no assistance in answering the first questions posed in the present case. The court then recalls that in the maritime delimitation in the Indian Ocean, Somalia versus Kenya case, it adopted an adjusted equidistance line as the single maritime boundary within the party's 200 nautical mile zones. The delimitation line continued on that course beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines of both parties. The court observed in that case 
that the delimitation might give rise to an area of limited size lying within 200 nautical miles of the coast of Somalia, but on the Kenyan side of the boundary. However, unlike the situation in the two Bay of Bengal cases, the court considered that the existence of a gray area was only a possibility, depending on the extent of Kenya's entitlement to an extended continental shelf. The court therefore did not consider it necessary to pronounce on the legal regime that would apply in this possible gray area. The court turns next to certain considerations relevant to the regime that governs the extended continental shelf. The court notes that in contemporary customary international law, there is a single continental shelf in the sense that the substantive rights of a coastal state over its continental shelf are generally the same within and beyond 200 nautical miles from its baselines. However, the basis for the entitlement to a continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from a state's baselines differs from the basis for entitlement beyond 200 nautical miles. Indeed, in customary international law, as reflected in Article 76, Paragraph 1 of the Convention, a state's entitlement to a continental shelf is determined in two different ways, the distance criterion within 200 nautical miles of its coast and the natural prolongation criterion beyond 200 nautical miles, with the outer limit to be established on the basis of scientific and technical criteria. The court further notes that the substantive and procedural conditions for determining the outer limits of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles were the result of a compromise reached during the final sessions of the third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea. The aim was to avoid undue encroachment on the seabed and ocean floor and subsoil thereof beyond the limits of national jurisdiction considered the common heritage of mankind and referred to in Article 1 paragraph 1 of UNCLOS as the area. The text of Article 76 of UNCLOS, in particular, the rules in paragraph 4 to 7 thereof, the role given to the CLCS in paragraph 8, and the obligation to deposit charge and relevant information in paragraph 9, suggests that the states participating in the negotiations assumed that the extended continental shelf would only extend into maritime areas that would otherwise be located in the area. Article 82, paragraph 1 of the Convention, for its part, makes provision for payments or contributions to be made through the International Seabed Authority in respect of the exploitation of, I quote, the non-living resources of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baseline from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured, end of quote. Such a payment would not serve the purpose of this, of this provision in a situation where the extended continental shelf of one state extended within 200 nautical miles from the baseline of another state. Furthermore, although the parties have referred extensively to the travaux préparatoires of UNCLOS, it appears that the possibility of one state's extended continental shelf extending within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state was not debated during the third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea. The court notes that in practice, the vast majority of states' parties to the convention that have made submissions to the CLCS have chosen not to assert therein outer limits of their extended continental shelf that extend within 200 nautical miles of the baselines of another state. The court considers that the practice of states before the CLCS is indicative of opinio juris, even if such practice may have been motivated in part by considerations <coughs> other than a sense of legal obligation. Furthermore, the court is aware of only a small number of states that have asserted in their submissions a right to an extended continental shelf encroaching on maritime areas within 200 nautical miles of, of other states. And in those instances, the states concerned have objected to those submissions. Among the small number of coastal states that are not states parties to the convention, the court is not aware of any and has claimed an extended continental shelf that extends within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. Taken as a whole, the practice of states may be considered sufficiently widespread and uniform for the purpose of identification of customary international law. In addition, given its extent over a long period of time, this state practice may be seen as an expression of opinio juris, which is a constitutive element of customary international law. 
As the Court has previously stated, this element may be demonstrated by induction based on the analysis of a sufficiently extensive and convincing practice. The Court notes that the reasoning set out above is premised on the relationship between, on the one hand, the extended continental shelf of a state, and on the other hand, the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from the baseline of another state. In view of the foregoing, the Court concludes that under customary international law, a state's entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured may not extend within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. The Court recalls that the second question formulated in the order of 4 October 2022 is worded as follows. I quote, what are the criteria under customary international law for the determination of the limit of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured? And in this regard, do paragraphs 2 to 6 of Article 76 of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea reflect customary international law? End of quote. In light of the conclusion that it reached regarding the first question formulated in the order, the Court considers that even if a state can demonstrate that it is not entitled, sorry, that it is entitled to an extended continental shelf, that entitlement may not extend within 200 nautical miles from the baseline of another state. It follows that regardless of the criteria that determine the outer limit of the extended continental shelf to which a state is entitled, its extended continental shelf cannot overlap with the area of continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. In the absence of overlapping entitlements to the same maritime areas, the court cannot proceed to a maritime delimitation. Consequently, there's no need for the court to address the second question. Based on the conclusion that it reached regarding the first question formulated in the order of 4 October 2022, the court then turns to the requests considered in Nicaragua's submissions. In this regard, the Court recalls that Nicaragua's application asks the Court to determine, I quote, the precise course of the maritime boundary between Nicaragua and Colombia in the areas of the continental shelf which appertain to each of them between the beyond the boundaries determined by the Court in the 2012 judgment, end of quote. Throughout the proceedings in the present case, Nicaragua has maintained that the object of its request consists in the delimitation of that maritime boundary. During the oral proceedings, Nicaragua explained that the submissions in its memorial and reply merely add precision to the request made in the application. The Court considers that Nicaragua's submissions must be examined against this background. The Court then turns to the request contained in Nicaragua's first submission, which was presented in the memorial and reiterated in the reply and which proposes coordinates for the continental shelf boundary between Nicaragua and Colombia in the area beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines of Nicaragua's coast, but within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of Colombia's mainland coast. The Court has concluded that under customary international law, a state's entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of its territorial sea is measured may not extend within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. It follows that, irrespective of any scientific and technical considerations, Nicaragua is not entitled to an extended continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of Colombia's mainland coast. Accordingly, within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of Colombia's mainland coast, there is no area of overlapping entitlement to be delimited in the present case. For these reasons, the request contained in Nicaragua's first submission cannot be upheld. The Court next addresses the request contained in Nicaragua's second submission, which was presented in the memorial and reiterated in the reply, and which proposes coordinates to delimit the area of continental shelf in which, according to Nicaragua, its entitlement to an extended continental shelf overlaps with Colombia's entitlement to a continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of the coast of San Andres and Providencia. Nicaragua accepts that in principle, San Andres and Providencia 
are each entitled to a continental shelf extending at least up to 200 nautical miles. It contends, however, that the continental shelf of these islands should not extend east of the 200 nautical mile limit of Nicaragua's exclusive economic zone due to their small size and their already much more than adequate maritime areas resulting from the 2012 judgment. In his 2012 judgment, the court observed that the parties agreed on the potential maritime entitlements of San Andres, Providencia, and Santa Catalina, in particular on the fact that those islands are entitled to a territorial sea, exclusive economic zone, and continental shelf. The court added that in principle, each entitlement is capable of extending up to 200 nautical miles in each direction, and in particular, that it extends to the east to an area which lies beyond a line 200 nautical miles from the Nicaraguan baselines. In the present case, Nicaragua claims that this area lies within its extended continental shelf. The court notes that in the maritime entitlements, that the maritime entitlements of San Andres and Providencia extend to the east beyond 200 nautical miles from Nicaragua's baselines and therefore into the area within which Nicaragua claims an extended continental shelf. The court has concluded, however, that under customary international law, a state's entitlement to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of its territorial sea is measured may not extend within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of another state. It follows that Nicaragua is not entitled to an extended continental shelf within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of San Andres and Providencia. Accordingly, within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of San Andres and Providencia, there is no area of overlapping entitlement to be delimited in the present case. For these reasons, the request contained in Nicaragua's second submission cannot be upheld. Finally, the court considers the request contained in Nicaragua's third submission as presented in its reply, which concerns the maritime entitlements of Serrania, Bajo Nuevo, and Serrana. Specifically, Nicaragua requests the court to declare that, I quote, Serrania and Bajo Nuevo are enclaved and granted a territorial sea of 12 nautical miles, and that Serrana is enclaved as per the court's November 2012 judgment, end of quote. In support of its request, Nicaragua invokes the court's conclusion in the 2012 judgment that the legal regime over islands set out in Article 121 of UNCLOS forms an indivisible whole which has the status of customary international law in its entirety. According to that regime, if an island qualifies as a rock that cannot sustain human habitation or economic life on its own, it shall have no exclusive economics or continental shelf. Nicaragua contends that on that basis, Serrania and Baja Nuevo are not entitled to an exclusive economic zone or a continental shelf. Nicaragua observes that Serrano was enclaved in the 2012 judgment and asserts that in any event, it is a rock incapable of sustaining human habitation or economic life on its own. In Nicaragua's view, therefore, Serrana cannot generate entitlements to an exclusive economic zone or a continental shelf. The court recalls that in, in its 2012 judgment, it found that Colombia has sovereignty over the islands at Serrania, Baja Nueva, and Serrana. It also observes that through the request presented in its application as further specified in the written pleadings, Nicaragua sought the delimitation of the maritime boundary between the parties in the area of the continental shelf that appertains to each of them beyond the boundaries determined by the court in the 2012 judgment. Therefore, Nicaragua's third submission, which it described as adding precision to the delimitation request contained in its application, must be understood as seeking a specific finding regarding the effect, if any, that the maritime entitlements of Serrania, Bajo Nueva, and Serrana would have on any maritime delimitation between the parties. In the 2012 judgment, the court found that it was not called upon to determine the scope of the maritime entitlements of Serrania and Baja Nueva because they fell outside the area of delimitation identified in that judgment. The court observes that there are two possibilities with regard to the potential maritime entitlements of Serrania and Baja Nueva. 
If Serenia and Baja Nueva are entitled to exclusive economic zones and continental shelf, then, in view of the Court's conclusion regarding the first question formulated in the order, any extended continental shelf that Nicaragua claims may not extend within the 200 nautical mile maritime entitlements of these islands. If, on the other hand, Serenia or Baja Nueva is not entitled to exclusive economic zones or continental shelves, then they do not generate any maritime entitlements in the area in which Nicaragua claims an extended continental shelf. In either case, as a consequence of the Court's conclusion in relation to the first question, within 200 nautical miles from the baselines of Serenia and Baja Nuevo, there can be no area of overlapping entitlement to a continental shelf to be delimited in the present proceedings. The Court therefore considers that it does not need to determine the scope of the entitlements of Serenia and Baja Nuevo in order to settle the dispute submitted by Nicaragua in its application. The Court further recalls that the 2012 judgment has already determined the effect produced by Serrana's maritime entitlements. Having found that Serrana is entitled to a territorial sea, the Court concluded that its small size, remoteness, and other characteristics mean that, in any event, the achievement of an equitable result requires that the boundary line follow the outer limit of the territorial sea around the island. In the operative paragraph of that judgment, the Court decided that the maritime boundary between the parties around Serrana followed a 12 nautical mile envelope of arcs measured from Serrana Key and other keys in the vicinity. As the effect produced by Serrana's maritime entitlements was conclusively determined in the 2012 judgment, there is no need for the Court to reaffirm it in the present case. For these reasons, the requests contained in Nicaragua's third submission cannot be upheld. In light of the above, the Court has no need to fix a timetable for further proceedings in this case, as requested by Nicaragua in its submissions in the oral proceedings. For these reasons, the Court, by 13 votes to 4, rejects the request made by the Republic of Nicaragua that the Court adjudge and declare that the maritime boundary between the Republic of Nicaragua and the Republic of Colombia in the areas of the continental shelf which according to the Republic of Nicaragua, appertain to each of them beyond the boundary determined by the Court in its judgment of 19 November 2012 follows geodetic lines connecting the points 1 to 8, the coordinates of which are referred to in paragraph 19 of the present judgment. In favor, President Donahue, Vice President Gavorgian, Judges Abraham, Benuna, Yusuf, Shwe, Sebutinde, Bandari, Salam, Iwasawa, Nolte, Brandt, Judge Ed Hock McRae. Against, Judge Tomka, Judges Tomka, Robinson, Charlesworth, Judge Ed Hock Skotnikov. By 13 votes to 4, rejects the request made by the Republic of Nicaragua that the court adjudge and declare that the islands of San Andres and Providencia are entitled to a continental shelf up to a line consisting of 200 nautical mile arcs from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea of Nicaragua is measured, connecting the points A, C, and B, the coordinates of which are referred to in paragraph 19 of the present judgment. In favor, President Donahue, Vice President Gavorgian, Judges Abraham, Benuna, Yusuf, Shwe, Sabatinde, Bandari, Salam, Iwasawa, Nolte, Brandt, Judge Ed Hock McRae. Against, Judges Tomka, Robinson, Charlesworth, Judge Ed Hock Skotnikov. Three, by 12 votes to five, rejects the request made by the Republic of Nicaragua with respect to the maritime entitlements of Serenia and Baja Nuevo. In favor, President Donahue, Vice President Gavorgian, Judges Abraham, Benuna, Yusuf, Shwe, Sebatinde, Bandari, Salam, Iwasawa, Brandt, Judge Ed Hark McRae. Against, Judges Tomka, Robinson, Nolte, Charlesworth, Judge Ed Hark Skotnikov. I shall now call upon the Registrar to read the operative part of the judgment in French. Par ces motifs, la Cour, 1. 
par 13 voix contre 13 Islands of San Andres and Providence have right to a continental shelf until a line until 200 nautical miles from which it's measured the breadth of the territorial sea, linking the points A, C, and B, whose coordinates are in paragraph 19 of the present ruling. Four, Mrs. Adonayu, President, Mr. Gavarin, Vice President. Mr. Abraham Benuna Yusuf, uh, Madam Shui Sebutende, Bandari Salam Iwasawa Nolte Brandt, Judge, Judge McMacri, Ad hoc Judge, against Mr. Tomka Robinson, Mrs. Charlesworth, Mr. Stonglikov, Ad hoc Judge. Third, three by twelve to against five it rejects the demand of uh, the Republic of Nicaragua on the entitlement to maritime uh, areas generated by Cedaria and Maranhiwa. Four, Mrs. Donahue, President, Mrs. De Gregorian, Vice President, Mr. Abraham Benuna, Yusuf, Madame Shwe, Sebutinde, Mr. Bandari, Salam, Iwasawa, Brandt, Judge. Uh, uh, Mac Ray, ad hoc judge against Mr. Tomka, Robinson Nolt, Mrs. Charlesworth, Mr. Snovnikov, ad hoc judge. A dissenting opinion to the judgment of the court. Judge Shue appends a separate opinion to the judgment of the court. Judge Bandari appends a declaration to the judgment of the court. Judge Robinson appends a dissenting opinion to the judgment of the court. Judges Iwasawa and Nolta append separate opinions to the judgment of the court. Judge Charlesworth appends a dissenting opinion to the judgment of the court. Judge Adhak Skotnikov appends a dissenting opinion to the judgment of the court. The text of the judgment is available from today in TypeScript. It will also be available shortly on the court's website. The printed text will be available in the near future. As the court has no further business before it today, I declare the sitting closed.